Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about how to pass data to an intent to retrieve that data from another activity. I want to create a layout with three edit texts where we can enter your name, age and country. And then I would like to start a new activity and send this data to the new activity so we are able to deal with it there. So right here I'm in the activity main.xml file and we will start with creating the layout. Let's create an edit text here, set the layout width to match parent and the layout height to rep content. Then I will set the hint to name because this will be the edit text for the name. I will set the ID of that edit text to et name and then I will close that tag off. Then we can copy that, paste it two times below, one time for the age, so ETH, and change the hint to, and one time for the country, so ET country. And finally, the button to start the new activity and send the data that is inside of those edit texts to our um, next activity. So layout width for that button is rep content and the layout height too. Let's set the text of that button to apply and close that tag off. And we had we need to set an ID too. So ID at plus ID button apply. Then we can go into our design tab and set the constraints for those views. Let's drag them a little bit below here so we can deal with them. I will start with the ET name, constrain it to the top and then click on those two bars and horizontally in parent. The same with the H, constrain it to the top of that or the bottom of ET name and horizontally in parent and this one too. And the button I will constrain to the bottom of ET country and to the parent right. Then let's quickly create a new activity. Go to your um, package here. In my case, it's tutorials. Right click new activity and then empty activity. I will call it second activity. Make sure to select that generate layout file option and that the source language is Kotlin, then click finish. Then I will go into that activity second XML file and simply add a text view that will display the data we will send to that second activity. So layout width is match parent and layout height rep content. And the text is initially, let's say second activity it doesn't really matter because we will set that text when we start that activity um, to something else anyway. And set the ID of that to TV um, person, for example, because we are sending data for a person. And make sure to select uh, to, to set the constraints in the design tab for that text view. Constraint horizontally in parent and vertically in parent and I will increase the text size to, to 30SP. That looks fine. Then we can jump into our main activity.kt file. And inside of here, we want to set an on click listener to our button apply, button apply dot set on click listener. And here we want to create an intent. If you watched my last video, then you know what an intent is for and that we actually need an intent to start a new activity. Here we need to press Alt plus Enter to import intent. Inside of that intent, we need to um, provide the current context. We can refer to that with this. And we need to provide the class that we that is the activity that we want to start here. In this case, it's second activity, double colon, class.java. Then we can call also on that intent object 
and call start activity with it. And that it refers to our just created intent object here. So that is everything we made in the last video where we just started that activity. But now we actually have those three edit text fields here and we want to be able to um, enter something in those fields. And when we click on apply, start that new activity and display that data in that text view in our activity second. And to do that, we need to attach extras to our intent object. So let's go into that on click list now, right before we create that intent and write val name. So we can extract the name from our et name. So et name dot text dot to string. Then val age is equal to eth dot text dot to string dot to int because age is an integer. And we first need to convert that editable text to a string so we can convert it to an integer. And finally, with a country, which is equal to etcountry.text.toString. And now inside of that also function, we can refer to that intent with it. And if you write it dot, then there are a lot of put extra functions. So that function has a lot of different versions we can um, execute. And if you just scroll down a little bit, you may notice that each version needs the name, which is a string, and each version, in each version, you can put a value. So here, that value is an integer, here a byte, for example, a float, a string. So when we put extras to a string, uh, to an intent, then we have to specify those extras in key value pairs. That means that we need to provide a key, which is that name here. So we need to name our um, extra that we put into that ex intent object. And we need to provide a value, which is the actual value. So in our case, what we entered in our edit texts. So let's write it dot put extra. And here we can now first specify our key, which is a string. And the convention for that is basically that we write it in capital letters as starting with extra underscore and then what kind of extra it is. So for our name, it is extra name. Then the next parameter is our value. So in this case, it's just our name because we extracted that name here from our edit text name. So whatever we entered in that edit text will be put into that extra, which we will name extra name. So whenever we start that second activity, we need we need that extra name here to extract that particular name here, because it could be possible that we want to provide several strings and we want that here because we have the name and the country. So Android Studio somehow needs a way to differentiate between them. And it does that by giving them unique names, which is in this case, this extra name here. So let's do this for our age and country too. Write it dot put extra. This one I will call extra age and I will put the age in here. And finally it dot put extra extra country and put the country in there. So that's everything we need to do in our main activity. Now we need to go into our second activity.kt file and extract those extras that we put into that intent object with which we started that second activity. So let's click on second activity.kt. And here we can create a val name. So we want to save that name variable that we put into that intent object in that variable name here and set it equal to intent, which is the intent we started that activity with dot get string extra. So we want to get a string extra and inside of those parentheses, we now need to provide the name that we provided in our main activity for that name extra here. So that is extra name. We can copy that and paste it here as a string. 
And if there is a function to get a string extra, then there is also a function to get an int, int extra. So val h is equal to intent dot get int extra. And here we need to provide the name and a default value. And why don't we need to provide that default value for a string extra? So that default value basically means if something went wrong with that intent, or if that extra here that we provide that name um, does not even exist. So if we would write anything in here, then Android Studio wouldn't know what it should return in that function. And in that case, it would just return null. And that has something to do with Java because those are functions that are implemented in Java. And if we take a look with control Q, then we get the documentation of that function. And you can see that returns an integer. And in Java, an integer is not nullable, but in Kotlin it is. But because this is still a function that was defined in Java, we need to provide that default value because for strings, um, you can return null in Java, but for integers, you cannot. And in Kotlin, you could even uh, make an implementation of that get int extra function that does not need a default value because in Kotlin you can make nullable integers, but it's just not up to date here. So we need to first provide that extra h and just enter zero, for example. So if that extra h does not exist, then our h variable will be set to zero. And finally, create a variable for the country and set it to intent.get string extra extra country. And then we can create that string that we will set to our text view. Person string is equal to name is age years old and lives in country. And finally write TV person dot text is equal to person string. And then we can run that app. So let's enter some values here. Let's say Mr. Poop is 21 years old and lives in China. Hit apply. Then you can see a next activity started and we set the text view to exactly that data that we entered in the previous activity. So that is a really cool way to pass data between activities. But let's say we want to transfer classes between activities. In that case, we, I just want to demonstrate that to you that we create a class person here. So go to your package, new, Kotlin file or class. Make sure to select class here and call it person. I will make that class a data class. If you know, don't know what a data class is, that is just to tell Kotlin that the only purpose of this class is to hold data. And it will, for example, automatically extend that class with a generated two string function so we can easily print that. Um, we can easily print a person without us needing to um, create such a string here. So just create that class very quickly. Um, it only has a constructor because it only holds data and it has a name of course, which is a string. It has an age, which is an integer and it has a country, which is also a string. And if we want to be able to send this class between activities, so to pass this class to an intent object, we need to mark this class as serializable. So that is just to tell Kotlin that we want to be able to parse this class to an object that can be transferred between um, activities and can be passed to an intent. We have to write a colon after that closing parentheses and write serializable. Make sure it is imported here. And then we are done for that class. Let's go into our main activity.kt file. Right below that line where we create that country. And here we want to create that person object. Well, person is equal to person, which we just created. And then we can pass the name, the age, and the country to the constructor. 
And then we don't need all those put extra functions here. We only need it one time because we only want to put that person into our intent object. So delete all this and write put extra. And if you take a look here, if we click in those parentheses and press control P and scroll down a little bit, here you can see there is a version of that function that takes a name and a serializable. And this is the version we want to use here because our person class here is a serializable now. So we can pass the name, which is extra person, and the person object we just created. And if we wouldn't have this serializable here, so if we, if we remove this, then this function will throw us an error because there is no version of that function that would take a person object because we just created it and it can't even know that we have a person object here. And this is why we need to inherit from serializable here. And actually serializable is not a class here, that is an interface, but you don't need to understand that for now. So make sure you have that put extra function like this here then we can go into our second activity and remove all this. And now we want to extract that person from our intent. So val person is equal to intent dot get serializable extra and provide that extra person here. Then we can delete that person string line here because as I told you, the person class is a data class, and that means we have um, a true string function that will print our person in a re very readable way. So it will just print all the attributes of that person. So let's delete that person string. And actually, this person is not a person currently, because if you click on that get serializable extra function and press Control Q, then you can see, oops, that it returns a serializable and not a person in this case. And because of that, we need to cast this result to a person. So we write as person. And this is just to tell Android Studio that we want to interpret that serializable result as a person. And now we can actually access the properties of that person. So for example, person.name. But we want to just write person dot to string here to set the text to that person um, converted to a string. And if we now run this, then we can create our Mr. Poop again, 21 and China, hit apply. And here you can see this is how the to string function works. It tells us this is a person, the name is Mr. Poop, H is equal to 21 and the country is China. So that is actually how you can pass classes between activities and pass them to an intent to use that serializable um, interface. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them in the comments. Have a good day. See you in the next video.